In this video, I'd like to show you the air nailer. It's a tool that everyone seems to need to use at some point or another. Um, and so what I'm gonna do with it today is I'm gonna just finish off this thing that I started in my demonstration of the lathe. Um, I have this big fat spindle that I turned and um, I wanna just make a plant stand out of it for one of my house plants at home. So I've cut two circles of wood and all I wanna do is nail them to the top and bottom of this thing, kind of like a big chess piece. I'm gonna use glue, and the glue is gonna be really the thing that, that connects these three pieces together. But while the glue is drying, I don't want the pieces to shift around. So I'm gonna put a couple nails in it just to let it sit. These air nails are very thin and small, and um, they're easy to drive, and so uh, I figure why not just put those in there, no one will see them once they're in, and um, yeah, it'll hold until the glue takes and then I'll be all done. Now the first thing that I need to do to get the air nail ready is I need to adjust the regulator for the air compressor down in the lower shop. To adjust the regulator on the air compressor for the air nailer, you gotta come down here in the lower shop. The regulator is attached to the wall here, next to and behind the sandblaster, and just underneath the air hose reel. You can't miss it. Now there's a big black knob on the top and right now I can't turn that knob, but if I pull up, I'll get this orange stripe and then I can start to twist it. You turn it in a clockwise motion and you'll, you'll feel it start to tighten up and as it tightens up, you'll see that needle start to move. We wanna get that needle up around 100 PSI to start with and we'll see if it drives a nail uh, through the material that we're using. All the material is different, sometimes pine, if you're using pine or you're using very thin wood, you don't need the air very high. If you uh, are driving through hard woods or thicker woods, you're going to need it to be a little bit, a little bit stronger uh, punch, and so you'll have to up the PSI a bit. Basically trial and error, but the air nailer works great somewhere between 80 and 120 PSI. I wouldn't go much over that. All right, I've got the air turned on. Uh, I'm going to test the nails in my gun to make sure that they're gonna go through the thick pieces of wood that I'm using for the top and bottom of my plant stand um, before I go actually shooting nails into the workpiece. If they don't go all the way through, then they're gonna stick out and I'll have to cut them off. Uh, that can be kind of ugly and it can make some marks. So best to get it set up and make sure that it works first before you actually work with your, your, your work pieces, your final pieces. Um, so I've got my gun here um, and I've got my safety glasses. And um, one thing I wanna say about the nail gun is even though it shoots pretty thin nails and they don't seem dangerous, um, they curl. So if they hit a knot or they're just going through hardwood, sometimes they don't wanna go straight in and they wanna curl. That can mean that the debris can come flying out from where the nail is going in and that can get in your eye. So it's good to wear safety glasses. Also, it means that you need to keep your fingers away from wherever the tip of the nail gun is. If that nail hits the wood and curls around instead of going in, it can curl right into your finger and that's gonna hurt. So first off, here's the nail gun and it's got this button here and this is where the nails live. So you slide that open and the nails are inside there. They just sit in there. Now what you want is for the nails that you're using to be all the way forward. You don't want them way back here, like that. You want them to be all the way forward as far as possible. And this nail gun will shoot different size nails. Um, since the pieces that I'm putting together are relatively thick, I need thicker nails. So I went ahead and, gar and grabbed the two inch nails, which are obviously a lot thicker. And I'm gonna put them in. You don't wanna mix up sizes of nails. So if you're putting in thicker nails, take the littler ones out. Save them, don't throw them away. Now you'll notice here that it's sitting on that track and I'm not gonna be able to close that, right? These nails need to be under that front lip all the way forward, push them all the way to the top. And then there's a spring-loaded action here and you'll hear it click. Now, if a nail should ever get jammed up in there and, and the nails don't seem to be advancing, you can release that and the whole top comes up and that'll get you to where the driving pin is and if there's a nail that's gummed up in there or bent, you can pull it out with a pair of pliers. If you ever get this far and it just doesn't make any sense to you, please come and talk to me before you break it. Um, we only have one nail gun, so. Before you put, if you're, if you're changing a jam like this, you have to latch that before you can put the nails in. If you leave that open, 
and you slide the nails in there and do that, they just come shooting back out the top. All right, so once I have my nails in here, then I can attach the air hose. Now the air hose is right here next to where I'm working, but I'm gonna want, I'm gonna want a little bit more of it than just that 16 inches that stick out. So I usually pull a little slack off. Now, the way that these air hose collars work, they slide back and there's a set of ball bearings in there. So I'll show you on the little nozzle here first. We have this little nozzle, which is just for cleaning and dusting things off. So for instance, if you see these little ridges on this fitting, the, the ball bearings inside there are gonna rest in this trough and that's what keeps it from flying off. So it's stuck on there now. Now to take it off, I do the same thing. I pull back on the collar. Now, if I don't hold on to this, it's gonna go flying. <laughs> so hold on to whatever you're putting, taking off of the air hose. Now to add it onto the air nailer, it's the same thing. This is the same fitting. So I pull back on the collar and some air is gonna pull, some air is gonna leak out when I push this on. It's no big deal. All right, so now I have that secure. I happen to have um, a couple pieces of scrap wood are the same as what I'm working with here. So I'm just gonna go see if I can drive a nail through and if it'll go all the way through. Yes, okay, good. So that means that my, um, my air level is, is good. I set it at about 100 PSI and that's great. It's driving it all the way through that piece of oak and uh, even putting it a little deeper, which is what I want. So now I'm ready to go ahead and assemble my three pieces. So I'm gonna use glue, like I said, um, this is going to be the bottom of the plant stand. So I'm going to put a bunch of glue on here. And I have, so there's my two pieces. Um, I have handy at the table with me a bucket with an old grubby sponge and a little bit of water in it. Not a lot of water, like an inch of water. I just need this in case I get glue somewhere that I don't want it. I can clean it up really quick. The last thing I'm going to do before I start is I'm going to spread out a piece of newspaper so that I don't get glue all over the table. Little Gloria Vanderbilt there. All right, take my work piece and I'm gonna put some glue on it. Don't skimp on wood glue. I don't wanna use a gallon of it, but I wanna use enough that it soaks into the grain of both pieces of wood. And that way I know that I get a really sturdy connection. When I, when I stick these together, it's gonna ooze out a little bit as well. So let's see here. I'm gonna put that on this side here. And so what I'm gonna do is flip this over so that I can nail down through there. I wanna make sure that it's centered. So I'm gonna just kind of look all the way around if I was really making something that I cared a lot about, I would um, measure this, but I think I don't mind just eyeballing it. Maybe I'll regret that. I don't know. Okay, so put my safety glasses on here. I think I've got it about where I want it. The wood glue makes it kind of squishy and it moves around a lot. So let me get one nail in. Okay see if I can make any adjustments here. All right, not bad. There's my first piece. Stuck on there pretty good. Now you can see I have a little bit of glue oozing out and that's what I'm gonna use the grubby sponge for. Best to do this sooner rather than later. Wood glue, once it starts to set up, is pretty impossible to get out of the grain of wood. In fact, it's easier to sand wood than it is to sand wood glue. Also, it will discolor the wood if it's left on there too long. All right, that's fine. Now I'm gonna do the other side. So same thing. And this time I'm just gonna go ahead and put the glue Right on there. You can see the um, divot or set of divots in the top of this big spindle 
from the lathe. All right. So once again, I set that on there. And I'm gonna look to see that things are in the right space. And I like the way that it's positioned. Looks pretty good. I think I just got wood glue in my hair. One in. Check it a little bit here. Uh, that's not bad. All right. Now, one thing to notice about the, the air nailer here. This is spring loaded. It will not fire unless that is compressed. Now that is why you would never want to push this up against your skin and pull the trigger. It doesn't know the difference and it would just drive a nail right into your body. But that has to be pushed down. Let me see if I can angle it here so you can see it better. You push that down and the nail's gonna come out. It's not very loud, it doesn't have much kick. It's not like firing a gun. It's a really easy tool to use. All right, so basic introduction to the air nailer. Um, you'll see me use that again in a later video when I show how to make picture frames. I think that uh, using the air nailer to make picture frames is one of, in boxes is one of the most common things um, for it because it'll hold it together, like I said, until the glue dries, which is very, very useful. Those nails aren't terribly structural. I wouldn't use them without glue. Um, they wouldn't hold up very well. It's the glue that really provides the strength. The nails just keep it in place while the glue dries.